Hello and welcome to Flipping Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today we are looking at some first appearances. But before I start all of that, if you want to support this channel, the best way that you can is by clicking subscribe, uh, hitting like, maybe leaving a comment, sharing it out. That helps this channel grow and that is ultimately my goal. If you want to help out in another way, if you feel like this channel is uh, providing some level of value to you, head on over to patreon.com slash flipping through and support me there, become a patron. Um, the link to that is down below as well as the website flippingthrough.com. Anyway, we're going to be looking at the first appearances of Spy versus Spy. I've got, I got all the best ones. Um, Mad Magazine number 60 with this. Wait, no, I did it wrong. Boom, the uh, the flip-flop cover. Um, I got mad number 73. Got mad number 268. Oh, look at that. Is that Alien or Aliens? Aliens, yes. Oh, that was so good. That movie was so good. Um, Matt, what number is this? 319, and then finally, mad 356. Do you notice how the care that I show for these magazines um, is inversely proportional to the age of the magazine. So as the age gets old, wait, no, it's directly proportional. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not a math teacher, give me a break. Anyway, so we're gonna be looking at some great spy versus spy stuff, some caveats. I did create some parameters because I don't want this video to be a full hour long um <laughs> so i did have to make some edits um i i chose creators writers and artists who have um contributed more than two strips and so that cut out some people that cut out you know one heavy hitter at least um there was uh george woodbridge had two um, spy versus spy strips that he was involved in and i'm sorry george i love you you're one of my favorite mad artists however that's not like a substantive contribution to the characters um i i did do i talked about i have the uh, the issue with the gray spy but not the issues with any generals or with baby spies this is a spy issue generals aren't spies Baby spies aren't spies, okay? We got to draw the line somewhere, okay? Um, and then a shout out. There is um, these people have contributed to Spy versus Spy again uh, to a, a small degree. Um, Bill Hanocha or Janocha, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Hanocha, I'll say. Um, Michael Gallagher, Russ Cooper, Jonathan Bresman, uh, John Snyder, Dave Croato and Matt Long, all contributors to Spy vs. Spy, all put pen to paper to, or typed a script um, for Spy vs. Spy. And I do recognize you as creators, but I'm focusing on that core group that cr that did the, you know, the bulk of the work. I, that's the wrong phrase to use, but um, I just wanted to give them a shout out because they did work on Spy vs. Spy. But I don't, I don't want this video to be an hour long. Anyway, so we're going to kick off with, of course, the very first appearance of Spy vs. Spy. And this is one that I think I've, I've ended up showing uh, a great number of times on this channel because this is also, like, one, it's been reprinted. Um, I think it was reprinted in one of the worst of mad i think that's i've only done one worst of and i think this was uh, this appeared in it and also i've done an, a couple episodes on this um magazine itself so this is one that we've seen before many many times and it is such an amazing entree into the characters i think um before i do that though let's read a little bit for those people who are unaware um that's way too, yeah, sorry. 
I'll just, uh, I'll read it. And uh, it's this uh, masthead. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but a little bit about Antonio Projas uh, is a famous Cuban artist whose anti-Castro cartoons have appeared in such publications as Bohemia, which has the largest circulation of any magazine, um, span of any Spanish language magazine, the daily uh, Prensa Libre uh, Free Press, El Mundo, and the Sunday Oveja Negra, the Black Sheep. He has won the Juan Gualberto Gomez Award, the equivalent of our Cartoon Society's Ruben. Um, I, this is the wrong screwdriver. Here we go. Um, six times. He won that six times. On May 1st, three days before Castro henchmen took over what remained of Cuba's free press, Projas fled to New York stone broke. Once here, he came directly to MAD. Among the things he showed us was this captivating cartoon sequence of friendly rivalry. Friendly rivalry called Spy versus Spy. Now, if you want to know more about his life, the I don't have the book handy, but the Spy vs. Spy Complete Casebook, that first one goes into all sorts of great history about Antonio Projas um, and what he's done. And I think this really is, um, this is a defining moment for Spy vs. Spy, obviously, because it's the first time they're being introduced, but it sets the tone of this friendly rivalry and kind of shows how sneaky and underhanded they are. So, you know, they appear, they they meet up, they shake hands, they're acting cordial, they serve each other tea, and they dump it out. And who are the real victims? The real victims are the cats. And it's like, there is something so, um, you know, they're, they're so kind of clever that they're able to deduce that the other has poisoned him, but they're also so cruel as to to kill off two cats. Well, I guess killing off a humanoid is probably a little more cruel, but we'll just focus on that. Uh, there we go. So it is a it is fantastic. I I love it. It to me remains one of the greatest spy versus spy comics of all time. Oh geez, this is the one. I forgot that this flips. It wasn't just a gag. Oh yeah, that's right. Look at this. One. <laughs> I pulled this out because this is one of Paul Coker's. I used this one in Paul Coker's first appearances too. Here we go. Right at the flip. We have again, spy versus spy. And then this, okay. Once again, let's take a look at the insidious plots being hatched in the rivalry between spy versus spy. And there's this beautiful, this is the start of like the gag in the in the words or in the the title sequence of it um being like a bonus comic <laughs> i mean it's like there's this obviously the six panel story but then there's this and as a kid reading these old ones this was just as fun to me as the main story was and so we have what do we have oh he drops something he draw oh it's ticking it must be a bomb and so he does the old switcheroo. He steals the clock, and that is all. He gets blown out by that. Um, now there are there's so many things to like about his art style. Um, I really enjoy the way he draws people, and I mean, you don't get a lot of tastes of it, but every once in a while, there are additional characters that appear whether it's those, um, the generals and they're like these big barrel chested guys or, um, the baby spies, or I swear there's, well, usually they, they end up dressing, <laughs> they'll dress up as other people. They'll dress up as ladies and stuff. Um, I just love the style so much with these, like the, the pointed shoulders, like, I don't know. It's just, it's beautiful. All right. So these, that is the very first appearance of Spy vs. Spy in Mad Magazine. Now, I have to set this one aside. Mad, number 73, September 1962, 13 issues later. I think at the time, 
I don't know, they, they were doing like maybe six issues. Um, I know that fluctuated. Sometimes they like they went up to eight, they went down to six. They were doing five for a while. Um, so that's over, I don't know, at least that's 13 issues. At least two years, the strip has been running for at least two years before we are introduced to the Gray Spy. Here, let me, I'm just going to kind of flip through. I don't, I don't think I've done this issue. This might be a fun one to do. Oh, great. Yeah, love those photo captions. Anyway, so we have the first one. We don't even get the the gray spy, um, but it is. <laughs> I mean, this is like this is just a a beautiful one. I want to. Um... Oh no! All right, he's been his his pants, his dungarees are run over. His bullets in his hat. There's a knife in his blouse. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's dead. I can give up. Look at, imagine the kick in the ass it takes to <laughs> to murder somebody. <laughs> That's true spy craft. Trade craft, I forget the, the term that they use. Trade craft, I think, is, is the right one. All right, so let's skip ahead. It would be nice to have them all ready, but I didn't want to like, you know, like crease them. Here we go. This is perfect. Um, now I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Spy, the black spy and the white spy are the original simps, okay? Um, but the gray spy is is wonderful. Oh wait, we have a we have a an introduction, and now. Antonio Prochias introduce, introduces a new twist to that friendly rivalry between the man in black and the man in white, mainly a woman in gray. And here we have, look at that, the, the, the submarine with the, the shark and the octopus and a, um, what would you call that, puppet, mannequin of her? flailing about look at they just they can't help themselves they're like oh, i'll save you oh, please pathetic anyway <laughs> this is again like i can't think of a better way to introduce a character all right so we have the beautiful gray spy with um i don't know zipatone or duotone or something no duotone right zipatone is like a screen tone so we have duo tone or duo shade, single tone or single shade, actually, because it's only going one direction. And then we have, um... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. I'm going the wrong way. I'm just, I'm getting distracted. So look at, he's so, he's so enamored. He's so smitten with her. It, she's, li she's tying something around his neck. And look at him. He can't wait to, to, till it's his turn. Oh, and of course it's quite soon. Like it, he's just happy to be near her. What is she doing? Look at they're woozy. They're woozy with just love. And there she goes. She she tosses them. Hither and yon, her gloves. And then they <laughs> and then they uh self sacrifice, essentially. They um they die. Imagine the force required. Remember when I was in middle school, there was a kid who was like, it only takes eight pounds of pressure to rip off your ear. I was like, that sounds actually like a lot of pressure to rip off an ear. I don't know. That's that's quite amount of force, but he thought it was none at all. So the the first appearance of the 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 dashing damsel She's not a damsel, though, is she? That was stupid. I just tried to do some alliteration. Um, the Gray Spy, which is just perfect. It's just, again, a perfect introduction, like that very first spy versus spy, where it's just very... Um, nobody dies, right? <laughs> they don't actually succeed in killing each other. 
but it's just this beautiful introduction. And here you have everything you need to know about the gray spy and her relationship with the black spy and the white spy. Whoa! Wait a second, what the hell? Once you look at it, if you do not buy it for your own, you die. Golly, have I have I seen this before? I think I've seen this before, but this is like, this is beautiful, the Alfred E. Newman hex sign. Wow, I love that. Just smash that in the monitor. Okay, up next, we have Mad Magazine number 268. This is artist Bob Clark and writer Duck Edwing. Um, this is, they took over. Um, and so this is their their mutual first appearance from what I was a able to gather. Um, though now I am filled with um, a slight amount of worry that I, I made a, a mistake. Sorry. Nah, 268. Yeah, that's it. All right, so we have 268, Aliens, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and the Karate Kid. Oh, they have that new show now. Maybe I should do this one too. Have I done this one? Anyway, um, so we have the first appearance of Spy vs. Spy by um, Bob Clark and Duck Edwing. If I can find it. Oh, my hero, Dave Berg. I love these typewriter tunes. Artist Smith Corona. <laughs> Writer Desmond Devlin. I want to get him back on the show. I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet at him. Um, that's like the <laughs> that's like the the most impotent phrase in the 21st century. I'm gonna tweet at him. Here we go. The very first appearance of Spy vs. Spy by Bob Clark and Duck Edwing. Um, and it looks incredibly similar. They do a pretty good job, I think, of mimicking both the style and the tone of it. Which I guess is it's kind of hard to screw up. They did. Of course, um, I think that I think there are a few times where it's been uh, it it sort of crossed the line. There was one that comes to mind where I think the black spy gets like chopped up by a propeller blade, and it's like I think you took it too far. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to get that graphic. Uh, but anyway, so here we have um, the tank comes knock knock, and this is what's great is that they have like these contraptions that are just way too um, complex. <laughs> They're needlessly complex. Um, not unlike Wile E. Coyote. Um, and so look at some, a jet car rushes out. Boom. He blows up the place and then he explodes it. So really all of this, like all of the technology that they're using is... Um, It's all hinges, no pun intended, on this Dutch door. <laughs> it's like they have, like that's what, uh, this, is, this is what it all hinges upon. Um, here they have this lovely, the title sequence where they're blowing the air. <laughs> so he's creating the wind. What is he creating wind for? Well, it's a kite carrying a, a miniature bomb. That's lovely. Now, I believe... Unlike so many times in the past, this was a single shot. I know, like, personally, I was very much used to, and still am. Well, no, not still am, but, like, I was used to having two, right? You have two in each issue. Um, and perhaps they went back to that. But here we have number 268, the first appearance of Spy vs. Spy by Bob Clark and Duck Edwing. 
The next one up. Dave Manick. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I always apologize as if people watch this these shows. Um, here we have Dave Manick, number 319, June 1993. Look at that. Oh, I still have my subscription card in there. 1375. It really isn't. Oh, yeah, look at this is one of my brothers, Austin. This is when we lived on Pillsbury Avenue. Oh, that place is great. All right, let's go find that. Enough of this. I keep forgetting that I'm not doing a normal review episode. So um, I like, oh, man. I want to get this guy. I want to, um, why can't I think of his name right now? Um, Rick Tolka. I want Rick Tolka. I want to talk to Rick Tolka. I love his style. Anyway. Will I find this? Some Tom Bunk. Oh, look at that. John Caldwell. Oh, that's another one on my wish list. This is where we do get a pretty big departure. Um, now, as a kid, I didn't really, it didn't really register. Um, like when I, I don't really think, I don't think I have necessarily an artistic eye, but there are some things that are um, notably different, I think. Um, a few of them are like their shoulders, right? Like you can see the shoulders are a separate thing. You don't actually have, it's almost as though like, yeah, like this has turned into a collar. Whereas before, like that, the arm the arm went up. That was not a shoulder. He also does some stuff with the faces that where they he gives them a little bit more expression. Um, but here we have, all right, top secret rocket project. He has the battering ram. And he's trying to close, close the door. Um, but this one, This one does depart from it pretty significantly, um, whereas this is not a separate gag. This is part of the part of the story. So he runs in, he attaches something, and here's something I don't think. I mean, I would have to to go back. I mean, you guys will have a better memory of this than I do. I do not remember the sound effects. Um, I remember this being a silent one and i mean maybe it's just because there are so many of them in this we have snap plit flick i mean this is like reading like a don martin comic you know <laughs> roar roar and then no crash sound probably because it's so far in the distance um but you get all of this sort of like extra um these movement lines on everything like it's almost, I don't know, it's, I don't like it. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to like beat around the bush on it, but you know, I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Now, this is, this is his very first time doing Spy vs. Spy. Again, I, I didn't want to do, um, like get it, go too much in depth on each artist. So, uh, certainly his style changes over time but this is like a pretty pretty big change without it necessarily trying to be a big change and i mean i guess that's a perfect segue into our final first appearance mad number 356 released april 1997 so um Let's, let's find this. Let's track this one down. Now, I, I think I've talked about this a fair amount. Like, this is uh, an era that I enjoy. Um, there's just, there's so much good stuff. Monroe, look at that. <laughs> a Joey Buttafuoco gag? Come on. How can you not like that? Kyle Baker. Here we go. So here's um, 
this is one of the more like fascinating changes and um it, it's pretty wild it is obviously he maintains um the basic look of it right like he didn't change the overall design of it but the way that uh peter cooper created the art is just wildly wildly different and I don't know. He's somebody that I want to talk to because um, I'm curious as to why this choice came about. Certainly, there there's a lot about artists that I don't know, Peter Cooper being one of them. I don't know what his body of work was like before this, if this was just a style he was using in, in other work that he was doing. Or if this was like, I need, I feel the need as an artist to differentiate myself from what has been the traditional way of presenting spy versus spy. And so he used what I, I'm pretty sure is um, spray paint, or at least like, I don't know, maybe airbrush or something, but he would stencil them out. Um, and it's wild. I mean, it is like, it's visually. Um, it's like, it's so complex. Like I, I cannot help as I look at this, but wonder how, how he creates this. Um, because you do have to plan this out. Presumably you can't just like grab a can of spray paint and some tape or something and just knock it out. There's, there has to be some level of planning, like masking areas off, unmasking them in a certain order, or just layering up and masking and spraying as you go. I don't know, um, but I would love to to talk to him about that. But this is um, a pretty fun, this is a pretty fun one because it is like needlessly complex, which kind of uh, matches up with what Spy vs. Spy turned into for many, many years. So, you know, Black Spy, watching some television. Uh, here, why don't I... It says, Beware the White Spy. If you cannot see it, it's a training video. Beware the White Spy. He hits pause with this menacing frame. Um, in the meantime, the White Spy comes, takes apart the television set, sneaks in, uh, does his own version of the pose, which I love that because it... You know, the, I like the way he matched up the angle of it just right. It just, uh, it's perfect. And he comes back and he hits play and boom, a gun comes out. And now this is, <laughs> this is like kind of crazy. It's like, a, um, what did, what is that term? Like decoupage. He's taken uh, like a picture, like a, another drawing of a Gatling gun and then cut it out and like pasted it in place. And here, here you have, um, I mean, it's kind of interesting with um, comparing it to the first sort of explosion uh, in Spy vs. Spy, where the black spy is, it's simply legs and arms and a hat, and then this the white explosion <laughs> versus now where we have um, bones uh, his eyeballs, his teeth, um, a little, I don't know, presumably some brain matter, um, all just spraying out. And it's, um, it really ups the stakes quite a bit. But anyway, um, so there we have Peter Cooper's very first appearance doing Spy vs. Spy. Now, I am curious, did he do more than one uh, Spy vs. Spy? I'm just looking at some of these drawings. They're so flippin' funny. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. Oh, Melvin and Jenkins. Another Desmond Devlin just masterpiece. Yeah, I'm going to go tweet that guy. Anyway, so that is it. Um, switch over to that. So... This has been looking at the very first appearances of Spy vs. Spy and the artists and writers who worked on them throughout the history of Mad Magazine. Again, 
I did have to have a slight cutoff. Um, I went with the people who had sort of like the longest tenures on spy versus spy. But again, shout out to Bill uh, Hanocha, uh, Michael Gallagher, Rush Cooper, Jonathan Bresman, John Snyder, Dave Corrado, and Matt Long. Um, no disrespect intended by keeping you out of this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you want to support this channel, please make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment below if you like it. Or if you don't like it, I don't know, point out my flaws. I don't care. Um, if you want to support this um, venture uh, in a different way, you can support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash flipping through. You can find that link below as long as well as the link to my website, flipping through. Dot com. Thanks so much for watching. Toodaloo.